Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Jimmy. Today we're going to be doing a very special review. We're going to be doing another Castlevania game for this spooky month. And we're not doing just any Castlevania game. We're doing a Castlevania game that's called one of the worst Castlevania games. Quite honestly, to me, since I've never played Castlevania The Adventure or The Castlevania Adventure as it's affectionately called in some circles, I'm pretty fresh to this, so I may genuinely enjoy this game. I mean, hell, I even got some enjoyment out of Haunted Castle, and I thought that game wasn't the greatest. But, you know, I found a way to enjoy it. So, um, let's give this game a go. I'm very curious to see how this game is. I mean, it can't be that bad, right? It can't be as terrible as what people make it out to be. Right? I'm gonna grab my Super Game Boy, and I'm gonna enjoy this. Actually, you know what? I just remembered. I have a Castlevania collection that I can use for this. So, I guess I won't be needing to use these guys. Well, that's a waste of five dollars I'm not gonna get back. But hey, whatever, I get a physical cartridge to this game, and it's Castlevania. Like I said, Castlevania is amazing. They can't possibly fuck it up. Right? You remember how one of the main complaints levied at the original Castlevania was Simon Belmont's blistering brisk walk that he would take while trouncing through the castle? Well, this game remedies that problem pretty well. Christopher Belmont walks at a snail's pace, literally crawling through four areas in the game. And honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's almost like as though this game is incompetently programmed. But I mean, this is Konami. They were pretty much masters of 8-bit Nintendo. Right? Story? For this game? It's classic Castlevania. All you need to know is your Simon Belmont's ancestor, Christopher Belmont in this case, and you're out to stop Dracula. The most riveting tale we're ever told. This game has such great platforming that you literally have to walk Christopher right up to the platforms, literally just on the cusp with just a pixel hanging off, just to make these jumps. That's even compounded with falling platforms later on in level 1. Because as we all know, falling platforms are amazing. I mean, everyone loved the disappearing platforms in Mega Man. Gameplay, as I mentioned a little earlier, is a little sluggish. But the controls are supreme in this game. In fact, the controls are so responsive, you may even have to press the jump button twice to get Christopher Belmont to jump over edges and ledges. Going back to the thing of platforming, the stages in the game, they're clearly built around this platforming and the limitations of Game Boy in mind. I mean, just look at some of these stages here. We have this stage, we have this stage over here, and we can't forget about this stage. Probably one of my favorite stages in the game. In fact, I love the stage so much, I literally purposely died multiple times just to replay certain areas of that stage. Because that's how much I enjoyed this level. Want to know about the bosses in the game? Oh, I'll tell you about the bosses in the game. The bosses are pretty simple once you get their patterns down. They're not as terrible as what some people make them out to be. Ostensibly, anyway. But that does leave a lot to be desired. Because, I mean, one of the bosses is literally just an endurance round. Which, for all intents and purposes, is a little boring once you get the pattern down. Essentially, you just have to wait for them to come down. You just have to make sure they don't jump, otherwise killing them is kind of a pain in the ass. 
And then here we are, the final boss of the game, Dracula himself. And how is he? Your first playthrough? He's gonna wreck you. He's literally gonna punch your head in. He's gonna suck you dry. And it won't be fun. But, thankfully for you, dear viewer, I'm here and I'm gonna show you a little trick how to beat Dracula. So, the trick is literally just to do this. Wait for him to show up, appear, jump, whip, jump, whip, jump, whip. And it's actually the second form that'll probably give you the most difficulty. How do you handle that? Well, if you're like me, you become a dingus and try and attack him from above and get completely killed within not even a minute. Or, once you get good, or if you do what I did and looked up a task and see how they did it there, you can literally just hang out here on the edge. Uh, and just like that, we defeated Dracula. Riveting. So I'm not going to lie to you. This game is fairly difficult. Like, extremely difficult. I literally had to go into a zen-like state a few times just to get through some of the platforming. Literally, the platforming. The platforming is the game's biggest faults. The graphics are perfectly serviceable. The music is absolutely stellar. But that gameplay, if it had that gameplay, oh man, if the game actually played good, it would be amazing. It's over. Well, that was an experience. It's definitely an experience there. So Castle Mania the Adventure actually has a pretty interesting sequel. In fact, it's actually called Castlevania 2 Belmont Revenge. Literally in North America, they didn't even try to connect it in naming conventions to the first game because the first game wasn't really received too well. It reviewed pretty average. It got pretty mixed reviews across the board. It's only in recent memory where it's kind of been shat upon by the general gaming populace and retro gaming enthusiasts. And considering the reasoning why, because at the time, you know, if you're going to play a Castlevania game, you should literally play Castlevania 1 or wait about a year to get Castlevania 3 on the NES. It's actually fun to note that in the design document for the sequel, Belmont's Revenge, they actually talk about ways to improve the game. One of those ways to improve the game is adding sub-weapons and increasing the game's speed. And honestly, I have to agree. And uh, yeah. Where can you get Castlevania the Adventure? You can literally pick it up physically. I got mine for $5, which is kind of a steal and kind of a little too much considering that this game isn't on ostensibly. It it's bad, but it's actually kind of average. Is it worse than Haunted Castle? Kind of, yes, because you kinda can't really do anything about the difficulty, you just kinda have to get good. Kinda like how we used to have to do things. Do I recommend it? If you like old Castlevania, I can recommend it to you, but understand with the caveat that this is not going to be your traditional old school Castlevania. This is going to be a lot more boss of the wall. Like if you die, you're dead. Because this game only gives you three lives and that's it. Once you die, it takes you to the back of the stage, which yeah, Infinite Continues is nice. And the fact that once you get good, you can pretty much beat the game in about 30 minutes. Like I had to get good with. Oh boy. It's also on the Castlevania collection. I recommend picking it up there. Because at least that way you can get the game. And you can also get the game's vastly improved sequel. And you get other Castlevania games. You get Castlevania. Castlevania 2, Castlevania 3, Super Castlevania 4, because naming conventions are for losers. Castlevania The Adventure, which is this game. Belmont's Revenge, Castlevania 2, because naming conventions are for losers. And Kid Dracula, 
which was actually a translated game that was only released on the Famicom that Konami brought over. And you also get the game's Japanese versions as well, which are actually pretty fun to see what the differences are, so some of the weird Nintendo censorship of the era is uh, gone. Nintendo of America's censorship, I should say. So, I can only recommend it that way. Guys, this has been Jimmy. Remember, guys, that you're beautiful. Remember that you're loved, because I love you. Remember that you guys are amazing. Remember to stay safe. It's Halloween. It's that spooky month, my dear viewers. Also, most importantly of all, remember to stay absolutely spooky. This has been Jimmy, guys. Happy Halloween. Have a safe one out there, guys, and don't eat too much games.